as you are picking your way through the hills, coming along the trail, as you are clambering over the boulders where a slip has currently just washed out the trail, you hear a roar from above, and a large form descends on you. It is the size of a giant lion, a massive cat, but this massive cat has bat wings and the face of a man, and arcing over its back is a tail festooned with spikes. This is a manticore, a flying, clawing, thagamizing thing of doom. And it is going to wreck your shit up. Hi, this is William Dirk Johnson. And this was yesterday's topic about hit points and armor class. But the hit points and armor class topic morphed into the discussion of the manticore. And how wonderful and destructive and deadly it is. For it is a wonderful creature. A wonderful monster. It has all the aspects of a great monster. An awesome monster. Um, we'll start by looking at some of the mythological origins of the manticore. It is from Persian mythology. It is from the desert tales. It is a sphinx. It is the same sort of creature. When people were out in the deserts and they looked at wind blown, eroded masses of sandstone and rock and where the softer rock had been blasted away leaving the harder rock behind and people looked at these shapes and being people they imagined and if they saw a shape which was basically a large mound with a protuberance at one end or to both then they would start to imagine something like a giant cat as a monster and they'll give it a human face and here we have a sphinx. Or if you stick a... And occasionally they gave, they, they gave it wings, because the Persians liked giving their monsters wings. Just being able to fly, that, that's cool. And some of them... got tails of scorpion stings. Or, th or arrays of spikes. Because that's cool and dangerous and deadly too. Scorpions are nasty. What, could be nasty, what couldn't be nastier than a scorpion lion? of a man's face that could torture you, beguile you, and connive with you. And that's what a manticore is. It is a monster crafted out of our imaginations, a terrible thing that you would never hope to meet. And now, in these enlightened times, we know that monsters aren't real, but we like to go into our games and meet these monsters, deal with these bogeymen and terrible imaginings from our past and we meet the manticore the manticore is a popular beastie he turns up in practically every role fantasy role-playing game i have seen there he is and he's either got a scorpion tail or he's got a phagomizer and often he can fire the phagomizer spikes at the enemy and its enemies it is a wonderful death dealing machine it is often a mid-tier monster you're not going to meet them coming out the gate because it'll eat you. But after you've faced a few perils and you've gone into more dangerous regions, you'll meet manticores. These savage monsters that will attack you and rip you to shreds and eat you. And they are powerful combatants for their giant lions. So they've got claws and they can fly. They've got those giant bat wings. They can fly. They can ambush you. They can swoop down on you. They can swoop down grab some victim, carry them up just like an eagle, and then drop them. They are scary beasts to count with. They have a, their face. Their face is the head of a man, but it's got jaws. It's got wicked, wicked teeth. So it will rend you. It will bite you. It will rip something out of you if it gets onto you. And lastly, it has the phagomizer. If you don't know what a phagomizer is, in the 90s, I think, the comic, the comic artist... Gary Larson did a, did a cartoon which showed a bunch of cavemen because Gary Larson liked his caveman cartoons with one caveman pointing to a picture of a 
of a Stegosaurus's tail with the spikes at the end. And saying, and this is the Fagomizer, named after the late Fag Simmons. And biologists, paleontologists in particular, were fans of Gary Larson. If you went to a biology lab anywhere in the Western world, you could bet there would be Gary Larson cartoons on the walls, on the doors, on the doors of people's offices. They were there. They were fans. And so the name took, after all, the structure at the end of a stegosaur had no name. But once it had this name, <laughs> in most comic, people adopted it. People started using it. It was funny. It was imaginative. It sounded like a nasty and dangerous implement. And that's the history behind the word phagomizer. And in your fantasy game, the manticore is likely to be a phagomizer monster. It will have those tail spikes and it will be able to whip them round and tenderize you with its phagomizer. It should be able to arch its tail over its back and BAM! <laughs> a face full of spikes. <laughs> Take some damage from that, fools. And often it can also fling those spikes. So it gets a ranged phagomizer weapon, and the spikes come back. So if you don't finish off the manticore, when it goes off to lick its wound, it will regrow its spikes and come back for more. So it's wonderful in that regard. It has a ranged attack. It flies. It is powerful. It is dangerous. And it's intelligent. It is this vicious, this is the face of a man. That face, in addition to be able to tear your heart out, can speak. It can reason. It can plan. It will form a strategy for ambushing you. It will connive. It will be able to work with other creatures, other monsters. It will form alliances. It can be part of a team. Or it can be the leader of a team because this is a powerful and dangerous thing. It can cow lesser monsters. It can be under its thrall so it has allies. When the goblins attack... They're not attacking futilely because they're just some low-level random encounter. They are setting you up to tie you down, to lock you in place so that the manticore can come in and wipe out whatever dangerous specialist you have. If there is a wizard in the party. Once they have t once the goblins are tied up the fighters, the manticore swoops in, thagomizes and claws to death the fragile little squishy wizard they can plan or they can ally themselves with a more powerful creature so that when the giant is out there giving you grief the manticore can come in from the sides provide that extra surprise attack on you or rain spikes down on you from afar providing suppressing fire keep your heads down while the other while the while the main monsters advance it is a wonderful versatile deadly creature it is fun it is has a rain so many options it can deal with you if it starts to look like it's on the back foot, or it thinks it can get something from you, it will deal with you, it will speak to you. And it, but it is a terrible, dangerous, nasty, vicious creature. It will threaten you. It desires, it loves the taste of man flesh. And in your fantasy game, that will be expanded to elf flesh, dwarf flesh, freaking flesh, and sweet, 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 delicious halfling flesh. To be very wary of dealing with a manticore if you have a halfling or a hobbit in your body, because they will want to eat that hobbit. Ooh, that soft, delicious hobbit. You might, it might even want just want to do any any deal with you. It will do anything just so long as it can get a bite of that hobbit. You give it the hobbit, and it will be your friend. It will aid you against the, against the giant. It'll aid you against that against your former allies because you have provided it with sweet, yummy, delicious hobbit. So that, in short, is a brief summary on the wonderfulness, the brilliance, and the fun that can be had with a manticore. Remember, it is versatile, it is deadly, it is clever, and you can bribe it with hobbits. Thank you.